Hello, thank you for joining us today and um, what a pleasure uh, I have to start this first episode. I want to apologize for the first um, technical issue we had at the first session and um, just don't worry, you didn't miss anything. You can still just let your people know, let your guys know that we are live and we are going live now. I just want to tell my folks also here uh, that we are live and that um, they can also copy and begin to follow us even right now, even right now, okay? So um, don't forget to share the link with somebody, with a friend, don't forget to talk about it. It's gonna be an exciting, exciting, exciting time and I'm sure you're really gonna love it, you're really gonna love it. Um, the question before us is very fantastic. Um, and um, I'm sure you are going to just uh, learn today okay so life now what is sos this is the first episode of sos and what are we doing why why is this important we live in a time and in a season where people are asking questions and we cannot just say because it is right because it is so we don't find biblical backings for everything we believe in biblical backings for the truth and so that sos therefore is telling biblical truth and giving scriptural perspective to today's challenges. All right, so today I have a question that someone had already asked before, and I'm, I'm, I'm so excited at it. He said, Is kissing or making love with my fiancé bad? She be we will soon get married. I love that she be part. Uh, is kissing or making love? He's not asking, Can I kiss? Can I make love with someone random? The question is, can I make love? Can I kiss somebody I am in love with? And much more than that, can I kiss, can I make love with somebody that I am already attached or engaged to? So I'm a fiance, I'm a fiance, and that's what I'm asking, and that's what I'm asking. All right, um, let, let's just continue now. Many of us will say that that question is not, is not, is not, is not, is not, is not uh, we are supposed to ask it in the first place. But whether we like it or not, Many people are actually having sex, making love, and kissing just on the basis of being in love. And whether you say it in church, or whether they say it in family, or whether we deny the truth, it doesn't make it less so. The truth is the truth. Many people want to understand what scripture is saying. And I want to tell you what scripture says tonight. And I'm sure that you're going to uh, just, it's going to blow your mind. Uh, but according to statistics, many people still have make sex, have sex and all of that. Uh, and so I want to look at um, this truth and see what God wants us to do. Rather than just telling people who don't have sex before marriage, I believe it's time that we tell people don't have sex because the Bible says so. Alright, so what is the Bible saying? What is God's perspective? And don't forget the topic is making love or kissing my friends back. I want to ask Sada's first question is kissing. Oh, uh, you know, making love, we'll get there. But let's put on start with kisses. Let's start with kisses. Because when people are in love, first thing they want to do is just kiss each other as you just have fun. Okay. I know you love him, I know you want to kiss him. And I know that you want to make love to him because it's your spouse. Uh, in a matter of months, a matter of years, you walk down the aisle with that same guy. So, you still want to kiss him. Now, I want to make a statement here. Now, this statement, I don't want you to run with it. This statement, I don't want you to just cut this part out, edit it, and say, ah, Fisai Adeli said. But I want you to take note of this statement. There is no command that teaches us in scriptures that we can't kiss. Now, that would blow your mind. But that's the truth. There is explicitly no command that says you cannot kiss. Don't forget, I'm not talking about kissing your spouse now. But I'm talking about kiss generally. There's no command that says we cannot do it. Actually, Bible again and again mention that word kisses. I want to give you some data here. The law of first mention, which tells us how we should interpret scriptures. Genesis 27, 26 to 27. Bible says that his father Isaac said to him, Come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. This was Isaac thinking he was speaking to Esau, but he was speaking to Jacob, he had been scammed. But that's the first of the Lord first mentioned. He said, come here and kiss me. So you can see that the first kiss was about a son and a father in scriptures that was recorded. And the first kiss was actually about people of the same sex. 
All right. In fact, there's a lot of kissing going on in scriptures. <laughs> a lot that will surprise you that we do not understand what this means. Let me say this to you more than 45 times. Scripture reference kissing. More than 45 times. Now let me break it down to you. 93% of kissing happens inside, outside of marriage in scriptures. 73% of kissing happens between two men in scriptures. 20% <laughs> of kissing happens between a man and a woman. And 4% of kissing happens between two women. There's one reference to kissing an idol even in scriptures. Hosea chapter 13 and verse 2. And Psalms 85 verse 10, righteousness and peace once she had a kiss. <laughs> Do you know that Jesus was kissed twice? One as a devotion, as a sign of devotion by a former prostitute. The second one you are used to, Matthew 14, 44 to 45. Scripture says, and, and, that's, and that's, that's quite key. And, and I, I, mean, I meant to say Mark 14. Now, as a sign of betrayal of a former disciple, Judas, you know, he kissed him. I said, who I kiss, whoever I kiss, that's the Savior. Now, five times in the New Testament, kissing is commanded of believers. Why am I talking about kissing as laying a foundation? Why? Because there's this germane thing about holy kiss, holy kiss, holy kiss. Paul actually said that. More than five times he refer to holy kiss in scriptures. Say we should kiss brethren with an holy kiss. Now, I, I was in church last week and a lady came to me and said, you know, I just, I mean, that's just an holy kiss. And I was like, really? Oh, do you really know what it means? Do you know what it means? Now, let me, let me share science things with you now. Uh, do you know that I said that more than about five times scripture talks about kissing. Now, the question to ask is, what's all this kissing about in scriptures? Why are they kissing each other? Because if you don't understand why it is done, the devil will lie to you and tell you that, I mean, it's recorded in scriptures. All you need to believe in your heart is that you are kissing this guy only, in a holy way, and then you, it's all right for you to kiss. All of these things are not what scriptures is saying. And that's why we're talking about straight out of scriptures. What is scripture really saying? Very important. Now, I want to share with you six things that kisses represent in scriptural times. When you hear people kiss in the Bible, what are they saying? So that when you hear, okay, uh, Solomon, okay, uh, um, Jacob, okay, what's really going on? What kind of kisses? Number one, it signifies respect and honor. Kiss signifies respect and honor. You find that in Ex Exodus 18, verse 7. Moses and Jethro. When Jethro returned to Moses, scripture told us, Jethro was the father in law. Scripture told us that Moses kissed him, welcomed him, but it's a sign of respect, a sign of honor. For Samuel chapter 10 verse 1, Scripture also told us that Samuel kissed Saul as a sign of honor. After he poured oil on him, 10 1, Scripture says he kissed him. What, is also, what does it represent? Number two, it represents love. Yes, sensual love, especially in Sons of Solomon. Sons of Solomon chapter 1 verse 2. Say, kiss me with the kisses of your lips, sir, for your love is better than wine. And then you see it again in 8.1 of Sons of Solomon, talking about kisses. Now that's talking about love, someone you love and you are kissing. Fantastic. Number three, deep emotional attachment. When people kiss in scriptural times, uh, it tells that this, we are deeply attached to one another. Genesis 31.55, Laban kissed his daughter's farewell when they were going with Jacob. He, he met them and then he kissed them farewell. That's a sign of emotional attachment. Number four, it also means joy or sadness. Genesis 29, 11, Jacob and Rachel, when they, when they, when Jacob and Rachel, uh, you know, they, for the first time Jacob saw him, uh, uh, he was full of joy when he saw Rachel at the first time. Uh, and the Bible says he kissed her, he kissed her, he kissed her. And then it's also a sign of loyalty, Jonathan and David. That you find in 1 Samuel 20, verse 41. They kissed each other as a sign of loyalty. It's also a sign of trust. Uh, 2 Samuel 29, you find Joab and Amasa. Very interesting story. Amasa trusted and then the junior kissed her, Joab and then Joab killed him. Why? He thought he, he could trust him and that's why he kissed him. They kissed each other as a sign of trust. Now, the question therefore goes, what kind of kissing was going on in scriptural times? I've told you what they signified. Now, what kind of kissing was going on. Now, what does it mean in that time? You need to understand that scriptural times are different from our times. In fact, the time of the Old Testament uh, have been called uh, uh, the Asian Near East culture. That means it's different from our culture in Nigeria, from your culture, wherever you're watching from in the nations of the world. It's different. Why? Because at this time, uh, the culture was not what it, what it is now. 
the kisses was not what they reached now. They wrote scriptures and the things happened among those cultures. And you have to interpret it in the light of scriptures. And that's why I tell folks that when you're interpreting scriptures, you must interpret it literally. Meaning that you must interpret in the light of the intent of the writer. What is the writer saying? What is the writer saying? All over the world, culture still determines how people love each other, honor, respect, and show affection. For instance, in many Western cultures, I've read of places like Colombia, uh, places especially in Latin America, a lot of kissing goes, goes on there. I mean, they see each other and then they peck this side, peck that side. Also, a um, place like France, uh, there's also a lot of pecking going on uh, here and there and all of that. Now, if you see your neighbor, you've seen your neighbor for a long time in Brazil, and then she, she just comes back. She's married, but she just comes back. Probably you went to school together. And then she just came back, and then you saw her for the first time, and you're very elated, very happy, and then you hug the person and kiss the person. Now that's allowed, agreeable. But let me say this, if, if, you, if that were to be in Africa, if you go and meet your neighbor, maybe you've met somebody who is now married now, she's working with her husband on the road, and then you met them, and they say, ah, and then you try hugging her, and then picking her this way. I mean, you know that you are looking for trouble. You know you are asking for trouble. In the Old Testament times, this, and in New Testament times that Paul wrote about it, what were the kind of kisses that were really going on? Number one, it's a peck. That means they kiss each other here. A cheek kiss. Aha. Number two, what you find when scripture talks about kisses is what you find a hair kiss. It's more of a greeting than a kiss. When you ask someone and then you just uh, blow, just do you, you blow the kiss. You're not touching the part of the body. You just do. I mean, you don't shout. It's not like, mm -hmm. that's a village way of kissing. You're, very soft. That's the kind of kissing going on in the scriptures. Another one is top of the head kissing. Another one is hand kiss. That's a majestic kind of kissing. And, and this is what the kisses that scripture refers to. All true scriptures, these are the kind of kisses you will find. So, hello, you, the person asking, can I kiss my fiance? Using the Bible as a background. If you are asking, can I give this kind of filial kisses? which is familiar, a, a peck, a, 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 a forehead kiss, a, a, a hair kiss. A, if, if that's your question, then your question is, yes, you can. But if your question is that, can I, can I kiss my, because you see, there are levels to these things, like a holy thing. If you're asking, can I do a mouth to mouth, then I'm afraid your, your answer, according to scriptures, is no. Apart from two verses from the Sons of Solomon, Sons of Solomon chapter 1, verse 2, Sons of Solomon chapter 8 and verse 1, you will not find partially tongue kissing, amorous kissing, uh, erotic kissing referred to in scriptures. Therefore, because you are dating someone who you are not legally married to, you are still not married, under God, until you are married. You are, the marriage is still not married. You, it's an engagement. Uh, just like Mary had, even with Joseph, uh, if he, he, she had maintained a, an amorous, uh, she had maintained a sexual a relationship with Joseph, that child would have been called the child of Joseph. But because they were living in purity, engagement is different from marriage. And until you marry, God does not expect you to have sexual intimacy with the person you are dating. Like I said before, only in the Sons of Solomon can you find what you can call maybe amorous kids or French kids or all of those things. Now, there's a problem with you sticking with the Sons of Solomon, therefore, and say, I'm going to interpret my life based on the Sons of Solomon for two reasons, basically. Number one, uh, the Sons of Solomon is an allegory. That means it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's not real. It's not something that really happened. It's an allegory for the intention of bringing out life lessons. So that's number one. Number two, even in the story, if you are going to read it like word for word, and you're going to interpret word for word, you're going to discover that even in that same story, they never kissed. They did it. What you will find there is them referencing it. I, I will, I will, I will. So it's okay for you to write a point to your spouse and say, oh, I'm going to kiss you when we get married. I'm waiting for that day, 12th of November 2024, uh, 12th of, of November 2021, okay, it's three weeks to go, it's five weeks to go. You can make reference to that. You can also write points like they did, but you cannot actually perform that act in itself. Why did I say that? Because kissing is a great temptation 
that most Christians dating cannot handle. Once you start kissing, you move forward and you go deeper. I tell you, it's a huge temptation and you just keep going deeper into that sea and sometimes we never can end. But the question before I tell you reasons you should not, I'd like to ask you sincerely even now at this first episode, why do you want to kiss him? Why do you want to kiss her? Why is it important to kiss your fiancé, fiancé, or whatever the case is? Why do you want to do it? Why is it important? <laughs> uh, uh, is it because your body is on fire? <laughs> is, it be, is it a way of repaying them because they are nice people? Or is it because you are open to temptation, you both saw a movie together, and your body has been set on fire by the events that happen? Or is it a solution to boredom? Or dating? Is it a solution to boredom or dating? Is it a way to cover up odds or loneliness? Is it merely for harmless fun? If the answer to any of these questions is yes, then we have forgotten the purpose of a kiss and the meaning of intimacy. Listen to this. Your sensuality is part of those big deals with God. Don't let anybody tell you that it's just do not segregate part of your sexuality. Do not say it is no big deal. Your entire body is an infinitely big deal. And this includes your kisses. <laughs> you know the devil lies to this generation and say, you know, it's just your mouth. It's just your mouth. <laughs> Don't listen to that lie. Your body is part of your sensuality. Whatever it is you are doing, you must understand that whether it is from your mouth, whether it's from your leg, God is interested in the own of your body. It's all of your temple. Now, I want to quickly give you reasons you should not kiss your fiance or your fiance. You should not kiss or your fiance or your fiance. Number one, it is putting your body on fire. <laughs> Can I say that? It is putting your body on fire. Proverbs 6, 27 to 28. Can you build a fire in your lap? and not burn your pan? Can you walk barefoot on hot coals and not get blisters? <laughs> is it possible for you to do that? If you put fire in your bosom, you are going to burn. Very important. The reason you cannot afford to kiss your fiancé now is because you are setting yourself on fire. I love the way the message I just read you said. Can you build a fire in your lap and not burn your pants? It is also fairly general, generally recognized that a kiss on the lips, especially a long kiss, is part of sexual activity and tend to arouse feelings of desire for closer intimacy. Once this type of kissing begins, there is a natural progression toward wanting touch, caress further, and ultimately full sexual intimacy. God designed this human response for the purpose of helping bond people together only within marriage, only within the premise of marriage. Let me say this to you, when they, somebody starts kissing you on the lips, <laughs> you don't need to begin to pray in tongues. The other part of your body will also begin to respond. You are setting yourself on fire. There, there, there comes a part of you that will also become strong. Why? Because you started kissing. So there is a natural progression. God expects that when you kiss somebody, it flows from that point and it keeps going. Number two, because of the chemical a natural difference in the makeup of man and woman. That's why you cannot afford to do it. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 2. Scripture says male and female created in them. That tells you there's a difference between a man and a woman. The way you, a woman get aroused is not the way a man get aroused. It's a different thing entirely. A woman get aroused slowly, progressively. Poco a poco like they say in music. Little by little. It's a steady walk. But a man he gets around, pam, just like he switch on a lamp. Let me give you an analogy here that will explain it for you. A woman gets aroused. A woman aroused that can be compared to that uh, pressing iron. You know when you switch that thing on and you plug it in, little by little the element becomes hot, becomes hot. That's how a woman arouser is. But you see a man is like switching on a lamp. Now the question is, after you switch on that lamp, a woman just kisses for a long time and says, maybe she has not got it to the heat, but the man is already there. Now the man now says, where do I go down? What do I do? What can I do? There is problem here. 
and eventually it begins to tell you, are you not bored? I am bored with this kissing. Can we take it longer? Can we take it further? Can we do more? Because I'm bored. You might be saying, you know what, it's just kissing. But when a couple have a passionate make-out session, when they draw the line, the first of all say, we just kiss a little. You will not touch my body. And then they start touching. And so you will discover that you will begin to re remove the demarcating line, little by little. You'll be stretching it. You'll be taking it further. You'll be stretching it. Why? Because you set yourself on fire. The third reason I advise you not to do it according to scriptures is that kissing takes away everything. The time of courtship and engagement is actually a time of knowledge. It's a time where you're supposed to really get to know each other. Unfortunately, that does not happen with many couples, especially when they start kissing. Because it takes away everything. Kissing robs you of intimacy. The only thing it gives you is sexual intimacy. It gives you lust. So instead of coming, because you see, courtship is a time where you build purpose, where you build your life, where you make plans together, where you build connections, where you pray together. But because you start kissing, <laughs> anytime you are alone, that can no longer happen. You want to touch, you want to caress the person, you want to be in the person's hands. Oh, you might say, oh, we're just going to be kissing each other's hands. But we both know that as he's kissing you, he's not going to fold his hands at the back. <laughs> it's going to be touching you, like they say, going to be praying, press, pressing some keyboard on the temple of God, on the temple of God, on the temple of God. That's not fantastic. That's not fine at all. <laughs> we cannot say that's good. When loss take over, <laughs> every, everything is almost damaged. Number four, it destroys respect and value. And I've seen this, you know, as a pastor over young people, I've seen this again and again and again. When people start kissing each other, respect goes down. The value he asks, she asks for the, the, for the, for the partner, just reduces. Your fiancé is going to respect you more if he has not touched you, if he has not kissed you. Because men like things that are strange, things that are still hidden. But when they have seen you, there's a working balance. He has seen you finish. When he has seen you finish, that's almost the end of everything. You cannot allow that to happen. Listen to this. God instructed you to be pure before marriage. Purity is God's way of preserving you in marriage. It's very important. Bible says in Hebrews 13, 4, Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and the sexually immoral. <laughs> so you see that? You cannot be sexually immoral. Why do you also have to just stick with this? Number five, it protects your marriage bed. I don't know how to tell you that, but your marriage bed needs to be protected. I've seen people date some people before, and then they say we are in a serious relationship, and it didn't work. And now they are dating somebody else. And then they are now saying, and then they now get married to the third guy, and they are saying, he does not even know how to have sex. He does not even know how to have sex. Why? Because you have gone ahead to experiment. <laughs> You've gone ahead to have things to compare. That is not God's idea. The way to protect your marriage bed is to keep yourself pure. Pure from kisses. You don't have to rush into what you are destined to enjoy. The less you do now, the more you save for marriage, the greater the blessing in marriage. Your intimacy is what God cares about. And that's what this is about. The time of courtship is the time of physical, of mental intimacy of vocational intimacy of psychological intimacy when you bring in sexual intimacy you are also corrupting the bed don't forget what i said in 13 4 of hebrews he said the marriage bed should be honored and marriage bed kept pure and this is very important i get a lot of questions on this and people ask me hello sir and can we do this can we do this can we have sex all right so it destroys respect. I, I think I'll just do number four again. It destroys, and this flows naturally from the last point. When he or she sees you as a sex object, something to be used for sexual satisfaction, respect is eroded. Purity is God's way of preserving you to your marriage. People lose respect for each other when they sleep with one another outside of marriage because it is not blessed. Number five, it protects your marriage bed. You don't have to rush into what you are destined to enjoy. The less you do now, the more you say for marriage, the greater the blessing in marriage. Your sexual relationship in marriage will be more godly, intimate, special, and unique. I get a lot of people asking me these questions. 
I believe the preponderance of these questions. Who saying, can I kiss before married? Can I kiss? Can I kiss somebody I'm dating? Is because we already know in our heart, in the depth of our heart, that we shouldn't do it. The Holy Spirit is telling you you can't. I have learned to always submit to the Holy Spirit. There is no scriptural truth without the spirit of the of, of the written word. And that spirit is inside of you. When he starts questioning you, it may mean that you are going in the wrong direction. And that's very important. That's very key. It's important you and I understand this truth. I get a lot of people asking me and I say to them, keep your marriage bed pure. And finally, listen to this. Kissing is a form of foreplay. Kissing for a long period, your spouse is a form of foreplay. It just means that you are ready to have sex. Most of the time, making out happens in intimate settings and behind closed doors. Listen to this. Sexual immorality is so powerful. So powerful. That we need to stand against temptation. We need to do all we have to stand. We are told one thing when it comes to sexual immorality in scriptures. And what is that? That we're supposed to flee. We're supposed to run. I tell folks when you maybe somebody you are dating comes and you're asking concerning a spouse, and you can see that your body is charged, your body is on fire, you are in fire because the lady comes in. <laughs> now listen to this. It is not the time for you to now begin to say, eh, sister, sister Nancy, sister Shalewa, uh, sister, sister, can you let us pray? It's not a time for prayer. It's actually a time to run and flee. It's very important you understand that. Now let me close by giving you certain scriptures here. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18. The Bible says, run from sexual immorality. Every sin a man commits is outside the body. On the contrary, the person who is sexually immoral sins against his own body. Against his own body. Whenever it, it's, it's not because, you see, because you are dating him or engaged to him doesn't mean it's not a sin. In as much as your parents have not approved, you have not been legally given out in marriage, then it is wrong for you to do it. Number two, 2 Timothy chapter 2, another scripture I want to give you here. Uh, Ephesians 5 3. But among you there must not be even an inch of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Imagine you kissing someone and then you're kissing, you are having fun, and then somebody comes in <laughs> and then you, you'll be shocked. Ah, brother Tunde, sister Ty, what's going on? Say, no, 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 we are engaged. <laughs> we are engaged. <laughs> we are engaged. What do you think they will say? And that was speaking the name of Christ in the front. And that's what Paul was saying. He said, do not let an end of sexual immorality. I ask people this. Whatever you cannot do in the public, in front of the church, as couples, fiancé, uh, fiancé and fiancé, people dating each other, spouse, <laughs> you can't do it in front of the church. They don't try and do it at all. I don't try and do it in a club. I don't try and do it anywhere. And I love this. 2 Timothy 2.2. Say now flee youthful love and pursue righteousness. He didn't now stay. He said flee. I love the Nigeria woman in Japa. Japa. Flee. It's time to flee. Do not, do not just because as long as he starts kissing you, his body gets into more fire and craziness comes on the line. Another scripture that finally now Matthew 5, 27, 28. Jesus said, You have already said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you, everyone who looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in her heart. Jesus had raised the banner. He said, listen, listen and listen well. I am not only telling you not to have sex, not to kiss. I'm asking you not even to look seductive. Because whenever you do that, you have had it in your heart. So as New Testament believers, I believe that the mark is increased. The benchmark has been increased by Christ. You can't look at your spouse and you have, you have removed that clothes in your heart. You have removed this clothes. He says, it's this part. You already said it's this part. You are not doing anything, but you are already touching something in your heart. Jesus said, you can't do that. Now, if Jesus said, you cannot even do it in your heart, how about kissing, touching? You can't touch, you can't kiss and stand. Nobody does that. Mm, you don't do that. You kiss and hold, you kiss and grab. And uh, I've heard of people who kiss and then they also come. That means that they are sexually satisfied already. And then you say you are still a virgin. That's not sexual purity. You can't do that. You can't do it in the name of a spouse or in the name of a partner. It's not allowed. And that's 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 that. That that's the scriptural truth. And that's what I want to tell you. Today. If you have any question, 
on your screen right now, it's um, it's an email address. Uh, because these questions are questions that people have already asked. You can just send an email to pfaspeaks at gmail.com. pfaspeaks at gmail.com. I'd love to have your questions. We will, we will treat questions on this series. I'll be back again Thursday, next week, uh, now 7 p.m. West African time, Nigerian time. And I'll be back. I'm sorry again for all the itches. We're going to fix it. It's the first episode. But here's the second episode. It's going to be interesting. Now, I'm gonna, you can see that I only spoke about kisses. Can I kiss or make love with my spouse? I only answered the beat first part. Next week I want to look at what scripture says about sex. Was sex even mentioned in scriptures? Now I've opened your eyes to what the scripture says about kisses. Now you can go around and tell folks that you know what, there are about 45 references to kisses in scriptures. All of them are not talking about mouth to mouth kisses. All of them are not talking about moral kisses. All of them are talking about pecs, kissing each other like um, um, the president of France, see the German president, and Merkel, and then Macron, and then they begin to beg each other at this part. That's the kisses Paul was referring to when he spoke about an only kiss. It wasn't a mouth to mouth. So you need to stop saying that. You need to stop saying that. That's not what scripture says at all. You understand that? Scripture is not talking about tongue gay or doing a French kiss in the church of God. It is a place and a pillar and the ground of truth. And so we must tell what scripture is saying. This is SOS. And I thank you for joining. I thank you for keeping time and I hope I've answered your questions. The answer is very simple. The answer is a straight no. If you're talking about pecking your fiancé, showing love, uh, familiar love, feel your love, yes you can't peck her. Yes you can't peck her. But if the question is, can I do French kiss? Can I do an amorous kiss? Uh, the answer, I'm afraid, according to scriptures, because against, it's against sexual purity, is no. And that's it. I'll see you again next week where we'll be talking about uh, uh, can you make love? You know, I love that word. It's not can I have sex, it's can you make love even with your spouse, with your fiance. I'm going to be dealing with that and I hope to see you again. Thank you. Share a link with someone. Let them know this is SOS straight out of scriptures. I love you. Have a good night.